In this video, we're going to take a look at properties of a rhombus. Now, before we do that, we need to review our properties of a parallelogram. Now, you might be saying, well, if we're gonna learn about a new shape, why do we need to know about things from a different shape? Well, we're gonna learn about that in a second, but first, let's review our properties of parallelograms. So here are the key things that we should know about parallelograms. We should know two things about sides. We should know opposite sides are parallel. We should know opposite sides are congruent. And we should know two things about angles. We should know opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. Or we might say that another way. Angles next to each other add up to 180 degrees. Now, the last rule about diagonals, the fifth rule about, or about parallelograms is about diagonals. Diagonals bisect each other. And remember that word bisect. This is a really important word that we need to know because we're going to see that word again later today. Bisect means it cuts it in half. You can think about if you were to, um, if you were to share, uh, maybe you get one of those like big cookies and you want to share it with somebody and you're going to cut it, you can't just cut it any way you want. If you're going to share it evenly with somebody, you need to bisect it. you got to cut it in half so you have the two equal halves. So diagonals bisect each other, they cut each other in half. Now, why do we need to talk about parallelograms? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you why. Now, this is a really nice picture. This comes from mathwarehouse.com, uh, and they have some really good stuff on quadrilaterals. And one of the things they have is this nice little flow chart of the different shapes. So remember, a quadrilateral is any shape with four sides. Now, we can kind of talk about some special kinds of quadrilaterals based off the number of parallel sides they have. So if it only has one set of parallel sides, we end up with a trapezoid over here, one set of parallel sides. And we're gonna look at those later, uh, not, not in this video. If it has no sets of parallel sides, uh, it might just be a regular quadrilateral or it could be something called a kite. We're not gonna talk about that now either. But what we are going to talk about is if it has two sets of parallel sides, and that's our parallelogram. And so far, we've only talked about parallelograms. Now, inside of parallelograms, there's some special kinds of parallelograms. What if I have a parallelogram where all the sides are equal? Well, if all the sides are equal, I get a rhombus, okay? Notice, in this case, all the sides are congruent to each other. Now, if all the angles are equal, I get a rectangle. It doesn't necessarily have all equal sides, but just has all equal angles. And then a square is a combination of those two things. It has all the equal sides like a rhombus, so it's a type of rhombus, and it has all the equal angles of a square, and it puts it together into one shape called a square. So, or all the equal angles of a rectangle, it makes the square. All right. What we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in on the rhombus, okay? What happens when I have a parallelogram with all equal sides? So that's our definition of a rhombus. If you're taking notes, this is a great thing to take a note of. Rhombuses have, or sometimes you'll see rhombi with some two eyes at the end. That means more than one rhombus. So the rhombus definition is that it's a parallelogram with all sides are, that are equal, or all sides are equal, okay? Now... That's the main idea. Now that has a couple additional things that happen. What happens when I have all equal sides? Well, two things happen and they both have to do with your diagonals. The first thing that happens when we have all equal sides is that the diagonals end up bisecting the two angles. All right, so let me show you what I mean. Okay, in this in this rhombus right here, we know this is a rhombus, okay? And when I draw my diagonals, remember the diagonals go corner to corner, okay? What happens is, is that it cuts these angles in half. So this would be 60 and this would be 60, okay? And down here, because opposite angles are congruent in parallelograms, because all the parallelogram rules are also true for rhombuses, it just has some additional rules. So it's not, it's not just new rules, it's all the old ones plus the new ones. And then over here, I could say, you know, this would be 30, and this would be 30, and these also would be 30. So when we're solving for things in rhombuses, it's actually a little bit easier because these angles are all equal, which is not the case in a parallelogram. All right, so when I have diagonals, they don't just bisect each other, they also bisect the two sets of angles. 
Okay, so we see that. The second thing we know, besides uh, the diagonals bisecting the angles, the diagonals are also perpendicular. And remember, perpendicular is a fancy word for meaning that they make 90 degrees. And sometimes we put a little box there to, to note that this is equal to 90 degrees. You'll see these little boxes. So those are the three things you need to know about rhombuses. You need to know that they have all equal sides. You need to know that they, the diagonals bisect the two angles, they cut them in half, and you need to know that the diagonals are perpendicular or they make 90 degrees. So it's something about sides and then two things about diagonals. They bisect angles and they're perpendicular. So this wraps up our introductory lesson on the properties of rhombuses.